Hello again. You know, in most courses, there comes a point where things start to get a little tough. In the last couple of lessons, you've seen some mathematics that you probably didn't want to see, and you might have realized that you'll never completely understand how all these machine le learning methods work in detail. Well, I want you to know that what I'm trying to convey is the gist of modern machine learning methods, not the details. What's important is that you can use them and that you understand a little bit of the principles behind how they work. And the math is almost finished. So hang on in there. Things will start to get easier. And anyway, there's not far to go. Just a few more lessons. I told you before that I play music. Someone came around to my house last night with a contrabassoon. It's the deepest, lowest instrument in the orchestra. And you don't often see or hear one. So here I am trying to play a contrabassoon for the first time. <laughs> I think this has got to be the lowest point of our course, data mining with Weka. Now, today I want to talk about support vector machines, another advanced machine learning technique. Uh, we looked at logistic regression in the last lesson, and we find that uh, these produce linear boundaries in the space. In fact, here I've used Weka's boundary visualizer to show the boundary produced by a logic logistic regression machine. I think this is on the 2D R, the 2D iris data. Uh, yes, plotting pedal width against pedal length. So this kind of uh, black line is the boundary between two of these classes, the red class and the green class. Now it, it might be more sensible if we were going to put a boundary between these two classes to try and kind of drive it through the widest channel between the two classes, the maximum separation from each class. So here's a picture where the black line now, the thick black line, is kind of right down the middle of the channel between the two classes. Actually, mathematically, we can uh, uh, find that line by taking the two critical members, one from each class, they're called support vectors. These are the critical members that define, the critical points that define the channel. And take the perpendicular bisector of the line joining those two support vectors. That's the kind of geometry, that's the idea of support vector machines. We're going to put a line between the two classes, but not just any old line that separates them. We're trying to drive the widest channel between the two classes. So here's another picture. We've got two clouds of points, and I've drawn a line around the outside of each cloud, the green cloud and the brown cloud. And it's clear that any interior points aren't going to affect this uh, hyperplane, this plane, this line, separating line. I call it a line, but in multi-dimensions it would be a plane or a hyperplane in uh, four or more dimensions. And uh, there's just a few of the points in each cloud that define the position of the line, the support vectors. In this case, there's two points. So support vectors define the boundary. And the thing is that all of the other instances in the training data could be deleted without changing the position of the uh, dividing hyperplane. Uh, so there's an equation, a simple equation. And this is the last equation in this course. A simple equation uh, that uh, gives the formula for the maximum margin hyperplane as a sum over the support vectors. These are kind of a, a vector product uh, with each of the support vectors and uh, the sum there. So it's pretty simple to calculate this maximum margin hyperplane once you've got the support vectors. It's a very easy sum. And like I say, it only depends on the support vectors. None of the other points play any part in this calculation. Now, in real life, you might not be able to drive a straight line between the classes. Classes are called linearly separable if there exists a straight line that separates the two classes. And in this picture, the two classes are not linearly separable. 
Uh, it might be a little hard to see, but there are some blue points on the green side of the line and a couple of green points on the blue side of the line. And in fact, it's not possible to get a single line, a single straight line that uh, divides these points. And that makes support vectors and mach machines, it makes the mathematics a little bit more complicated. But it's still possible to define the maximum margin hyperplane under, under these conditions. So that's it. Support vector machines. It's a linear decision boundary. But actually, there's a really clever technique which allows you to get more complex boundaries. It's called the kernel trick. And uh, by using different formulas for the kernel, and in Weka you just select some from some possible different kernels, you can get different shapes of boundaries, not just straight lines. Support vectors uh, are fantastic. Support vector machines are fantastic because they're very resilient to overfitting. You see, the boundary just depends on a very few, a very small number of points in the data set. Uh, so it's not going to overfit the data set because it doesn't depend on almost all of the points in the data set. Just a few of these critical points, the support vectors. So it's very resilient to overfitting, even with large numbers of attributes. In Weka, uh, there's a couple of implementations of support vector machines. We could look in the functions category for SMO. Let me have a look at that over here. Uh, if I look in functions for SMO, that implements an algorithm called sequential minimal optimization for training a support vector classifier. And there's a few parameters here, including, for example, the different choice of kernels. You can choose different kernels. You can kind of play around and try out different things. Uh, a few other parameters. Actually, the SMO algorithm is restricted to two classes, so this will only work with a two-class data set. Uh, there's are other more comprehensive implementations of support vector machines in Weka. There's a library called libsvm, an external library, and uh, Weka has an interface to this library. This is a wrapper class for the libsvm tools. You need to have uh, you need to download these separately from Weka and put them in the right Java class path. And you can see there's a lot of uh, different parameters here, and in fact a lot of information. On, uh, on this uh, sequential, uh, in this support vector machine package. Okay, that's support vector machines. Uh, you can read about them in section 6.4 of the textbook if you like, and please go and do the associated activity. See you soon for the last lesson in this class. Bye.